Oh yeah. Can't quite do that on YouTube yet. Okay, before I get into this video, I gotta give props to another channel on here. The Rap Critic. He's been making videos for much longer than I have. His lyrical analysis is on point and his videos are a major reason why I've been able to listen to and appreciate more hip hop and rap because I barely know how to talk about anything, much less music. So I would recommend going to check out his stuff if you ever wanted to get into rap. However, I did look through the Rap Critics archive and best as I could figure out, he has never done a video on this artist or any of this artist's material. It's okay, I, I didn't discover him until 20 years after he became a college radio underground phenomenon in the late 1980s and early 1990s, and it wasn't this year until I listened to the entirety of his catalog and was won over. I, I mean, I mean, how could anyone not be interested in an artist named MC 900 Foot Jesus. Okay, the 900 Foot Jesus thing. There was this televangelist named Oral Roberts, who claimed in the late 1970s that he had seen a 900 foot tall Jesus appear floating by the roadside in Tulsa, Oklahoma. People believed it. A lot of people believed it. So that's what the reference means. But who is MC900? He's Mark Griffin, a classically trained musician out of Tennessee, he operates mostly out of Texas these days. His instrument of choice was the trumpet, got disillusioned with music that he heard while working in a record store, decided to try it out on his own. He became an underground alternative sensation with his first two albums, 1989 Hell with the Lid Off and 1991's Welcome to My Dream. His most successful single, If I Only Had a Brain, buoyed by a Spike Jones directed music video, helped his third album, 1993's One Step Ahead of the Spider, sell well. What the hell's the matter with you, Beavis? <laughs> and those were the only three albums he made. The label wanted him to keep making the novelty rap that got airplay on the radio while he was itching to experiment and bring more jazz influences into his work. He still performs once in a while, does DJ sets at local venues, but there's been no word yet on a new record. By the way, uh, Mark actually has his own channel here on YouTube. Link is down in the description. Uh, I post stuff there from time to time, like old old concert footage, uh, alternative cuts of music videos, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I don't really care if you like, comment, subscribe to this channel or this video or me or whatever, but if you enjoy the music that you get from this video, you listen to MC900 and you like what he does, uh, go let him know, drop a comment, hell, maybe even leave him a donut if you really want. <laughs> I would like to talk about how the first two albums gave me warm, cozy feelings with production straight out of the old school, with DJ Zero, aka Patrick Rollins, being treated as an equal member of the group and getting some great moments to shine on the turntable. Or how One Step Ahead of the Spider still feels like an MC900 album even with the vinyl artistry swapped out with flavors of beat poetry, jazz fusion, and one song that I can only describe as spoken word, blue-eyed neo-soul. You see, this kind of shit is why I sometimes really hate genres. It's as easy as it is for them to like, you know, define a sound and be able 
for people to talk about it in a way that others will know what you're talking about. There are so many nowadays that it feels just confusing and they all kind of overlap each other sometimes. And then we get caught up in trying to define it instead of, you know, just enjoying things for what they are. <sighs> oh my God, I'm so tired. But that's not the record I bought. I found a 12 inch single of The City Sleeps, the song promoted from his second album, Welcome to My Dream. This one came from the student radio station at Northwestern University, and uh, it has the following note on the cover. Believe it or not, this 12 inch is very funky, very jazzy, and works much better on street beat. Sorry, Club Beat. Do not steal. And yeah, the vocal, instrumental, and clarinet remixes, yes, there is a clarinet remix, all have that funk to them. I half expected to hear James Brown doing call and response with the backing track. The radio mix is a shorter version of the much colder and softer edged album cut. And the whole single provides a great example at how different backing tracks can affect the whole feel of a rhyme. While the radio mix feels like a confession, the vocal mix and all its children have a cocky swagger to them. Of course, it's the first person story in the lyrics that made this song slightly infamous. When one writes about burning down buildings at night, all the eyebrows that don't get singed will raise an alarm. And WJZ News in Baltimore took one listen to the song when it started getting airplay, and... Apollo, did uh, Thomas give you any indication that he might even go so far as to ask his stations not to play the song? He's concerned about those people who are emotionally, mentally, possibly even sexually uh, turned on by fire. The fact that there is no comeuppance for the arsonist in this song and all his actions are described in a straightforward, rational manner, at least to the arsonist, doesn't help the lack of any condemnation of his behavior. And his motives aren't clear for a while, so I found myself nodding along to the beat and then feeling guilty once the can of gasoline came out. But the effect works. And it's clear that this is a character. MC900 is great at creating disturbing profiles of recognizable people in his lyrics. And his vocal tone and use of microphone destruction do everything to drive the point home that this is all... Believable, make-believe. And yeah, I'm not claiming that MC900 is better than De La Soul or Big Daddy Kane. You know, there, there are the people that have said white boys can't rap. Well, I can't rap, man. I can't rap at all. <laughs> you know? I don't think he's really trying to rap. Yeah, it's like... Uh, he's I, just I, uh, putting out a message, you know. Like I said, I'm not very knowledgeable on the genre, but this was way more interesting to me musically and lyrically than any Wikipedia-fueled diss track. So, should you get The City Sleeps? Honestly, for a new listener, I wouldn't recommend it. As much as I enjoyed this single, that comes with the caveat that I am a bit weird with my tastes in music, and not everyone is up for something dark. I'd rather introduce someone to MC900 with If I Only Had a Brain, Truth Is Out of Style, maybe even The Killer Inside Me, and let folks explore on their own. You know, maybe they'll find the Miles Davis tribute in his later work, Maybe they'll only stream the singles while washing dishes and never think about it again after this video disappears into their viewing history. 
but I can say that I found some new music for my personal listening rotation. And for something that cost only two bucks, I feel like I gained more than I spent. All right, next album. I have no idea. There is no artist or album title or track listing on this cover. Just a photo of some very upstanding honkies. I am very afraid. Everyone has a little secret he keeps. I make the donuts while the city sleeps. Ow! 